Welcome to our electron line. Our next problem is kind of an interesting one. We're starting with a simple pendulum at sea level. Notice that we have a steel wire at the very bottom of the steel wire. There is a, a, a small mass. And as we get it to oscillate back and forth at a temperature of 27 degrees centigrade, it has some initial period. They don't tell us what the initial period is. Then we take that pendulum up to the top of a very tall mountain, a mountain with an, an elevation of 8,000 meters. It's got to be somewhere in the Himalayas. At that point, we realize since we're farther away from the center of the Earth, the gravitational, the acceleration of the gravity will be less, and so therefore the period will have lengthened, it'll be a longer period. So the only way to compensate for that is to cool the pendulum down so that the length of the pendulum will shorten and that will then speed the pendulum up again. We want to know what the final temperature needs to be so that the period at 8,000 meters with a smaller acceleration due to gravity will be the same as the period when it's at sea level at a temperature of 27 degrees centigrade. So the strategy here is that we first want to find out what our new acceleration due to gravity is, see how that affects the period, and then find out what a change in temperature is required or what change in temperature is required in order to bring the period back down to the original period. So first, let's worry about finding acceleration due to gravity. We know that F equals ma, and if that force is the, the force due to gravity, then acceleration will be the acceleration due to gravity. So we can say that mg is equal to g little m big M divided by r squared, where m is the mass of any small object, big M will be the mass of the Earth, r will be the rays of the Earth, and of course g is the, is the universal gravitational constant. So we can see that if we cancel out the small m, that this is how we find g. Now we need to find g at a much higher elevation. Hmm. So first, I guess what we should do is find g at zero. Z so when, well, let's find g at zero. Even though we, we were given this value, I'm going to calculate g anyway because hmm, we want to make sure that that's exactly the same as before. So let's do that. Uh, plug in the numbers, we can say that g is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24, that's in kilograms, all divided by the radius at the equator. The radius is 6,378 kilometers, converted to meters, and squaring that. So that gives us a G. Let's find out what that's equal to, 6.67. Uh, that would be e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24 divided by 6378000 squared equals, and we get something like 980.5, that would be centimeters per second squared. So let's go ahead and amend this. Let's make this 980.5. Because I used the radius of 6378 and um, used the following numbers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that pendulum all the way up to 8,000 meters, which means we're going to add another 8,000 meters to our radius. So G at the top, let's do that. We have G at the top is going to be equal to, plugging in new numbers, that would be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, multiply times the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, all divided by the new radius, which would be 6, 3, that would be 8, 6, 8, 6, 0, 0, 0, quantity squared. So what we've done now is we added the 8,000 meters to our radius to get the new radius and therefore a smaller g. So let's do this again, 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24th divided by 6386000 squared equals, and notice our new g at the top is going to be equal to 9.78, uh, 978.1 centimeters per second squared. 
Okay, so now that we have G at sea level and G at the top, we should now be able to figure out how that affects our period if we ignore the temperature for now. So, we know that the omega is equal to 2 pi F, which means that F is equal to 1 over 2 pi times omega, which is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of G over L. Now, let me put that as a big L so it's easier to see. There we go. All right. Which means that the period, which is 1 over the frequency, therefore is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. That means that T at the top divided by T at sea level is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G at the top divided by 2 pi times the square root of L over G at sea level. Of course, the 2 pi's cancel out. And let's assume for a moment that the length has not changed. Hmm. If the length hasn't changed, if we, if we keep the temperature the same, then, of course, the L's are the same, the L's cancel out, and then we know that T at the top divided by T at sea level is going to be equal to the square root of G at sea level divided by G at the top, which is equal to the square root of G at sea level, which is 980.5, divided by, at the top, 978.1. And you can see that the period is going to be longer, so the, the pendulum, yeah, is going to swing more slowly. So we have 980.5 divided by 978.1, take the square root of that, and that means that the period has increased to 1.0012. There we go. The new period, relative to the old period, the period is going to be a little bit longer because the acceleration of gravity is a little bit less. Hmm. So now what we need to do is find out how we get the period to be back to normal. We want the same period as before, so we need to change the temperature. By making it cooler, we shrink the period, we shrink the length of that steel wire, which means that we're going to have a faster period. So the question now is, how long does that wire need to be? So what we need to do then is we want the T at the top to be equal to the T at sea level. Which means that we want the square root of L over G at the top to be equal to the square root of L over G at sea level. Now if we square both sides, we have L at the top, so this would be the top of course, this would be at sea level, so the L at the top divided by G at the top has to equal L at sea level divided by G at sea level. So that's the original length, that's G at sea level, G at the top, that means L at the top is going to be equal to G at the top divided by G at sea level times L at sea level. And so of course what we want to make sure of is that the L at the top will not be equal to the same to this right here. Now this G at the top divided by G at sea level is going to be Uh, hang on a second. I think I might have made a mistake. Let me try something here. 980.5 divided by 978.1. I think I need to take the square root of that. I did not take the square root. Ha. Ah. Oh, I did take the square root. So that's correct. All right. So square that. That means that G at the top, G is C level. If I square that, I take the inverse of that. So I have the length at the top needs to be equal to 0 0.99755, the length at sea level. And now I need to figure out the change in the temperature to make that happen. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to find an equation that will allow us to calculate the change in the temperature required 
to make this change in the length. After all, we're trying to make the length of the, period of the pendulum shorter to speed up the period to get it to be the same period as at sea level of 27 degrees centigrade. So that means that we need L at the top is equal to L at sea level plus the change in the length. Of course, that's going to be a negative change, but we'll get to that later. So this is equal to L at sea level plus L at sea level times the linear coefficient of expansion, which we have right there, times the change in the temperature, and that will be L at the top. So now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out an L at sea level, divide both sides by that. So we have L at the top divided by L at sea level that is equal to, or actually we'll end up with a 1 plus alpha T. So we're going to subtract a 1 from both sides and multiply both sides by 1 over alpha, which gives us a delta T. So that solved this equation for delta T by first factoring an L at sea level, dividing both sides by that, then bringing the 1 over to this side, and divide both sides by 1 over alpha. So finally, delta T is equal to 1 over alpha, which is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5, multiplied times the ratio of L top divided by LC, which is this, 0 0.99755, and subtracting 1 from that. And that will give us the change in the temperature. So subtract 1, multiplying that by, or dividing that by 1.1 e to the 5 minus, and that gives me a change in the temperature, and I'm out of, flat out of room here, so I'm going to bring it up here. So that means a delta temperature equal to minus 223 centigrade degrees. Now, notice that we started at 27 degrees centigrade there. So that means that T final, T final equals T initial plus delta T, which is equal to 27 degrees centigrade uh, plus a negative plus a negative 223 centigrade degrees. And so that means that we're down to about a minus 200 degrees centigrade for the final temperature, approximately 27 minus 223 centigrade degrees. So we have to cool the pendulum down to about 200 degrees below zero in order for the period to be the same at 8,000 meters compared to what it is at sea level. And that is how it's done.